Now, SMN1, as it's shown here, is located on the long arm of chromosome 5. And there are actually two genes that are fairly similar, SMN1 and SMN2, which are shown here. And below, you can see that SMN1 has nine different exons, exons 1 through 8. And SMN2, which is nearly identical, also has a similar structure. And to just talk a little bit more about these two genes, SMN1 and SMN2, as we had discussed earlier, there are these different exons within the genomic structure. And these exons, as you've probably learned from medical school, uh, eventually get, after transcription, then get spliced together into a mature messenger RNA. And the splicing pattern of these two genes is slightly different. SMN1, which is the primary gene that's responsible for making the SMN protein, um, splices in a way which includes exon 7 nearly 100% of the time. And so therefore produces a normal SMN protein at, at high efficiency. SMN2 is only slightly different. And in fact, when it's spliced in a full length form, it can make a completely functional protein. However, the differences actually lead to a difference in splicing so that the large majority of the time, perhaps close to 90% of the time, exon 7 is excluded. So when exon 7 is excluded, that transcript, that messenger RNA, is not capable of making a, a functional SMN protein. So one way to think about it is the SMN2 gene is capable of making a fully functional SMN protein. It just does so at a much lower efficiency. Now, the SMN2 gene is really of hardly any consequence in an individual who is healthy and does not have SMA. However, in a patient who has SMA, they're missing the SMN1 gene or it's mutated. And as a result, the only SMN protein that SMA patients have are produced from the SMN2 gene. And the SMN2 gene does so at a much lower efficiency. So that small amount of SMN protein is the lifeline, essentially, of the motor neurons of these patients who have SMA.